Welcome to Outnumbered. I am Kaylee McEnany. I'm here with my co-host, Emily Campagno. Also joining us, Julie Banderas, Kat Temp, and Jason Chaffetz. It is Friday. We're going to have a lot of fun. Thank you for joining us. We expect to hear from the president in the next hour as he ends yet another very bad week. There are new record high inflation numbers out this morning. Check these out. Grocery prices jumping 12%, gas soaring 49%, more than double from when he took office. And there are more terrible numbers for the president. This time, his poll numbers. Remember the ones he says he doesn't check, but wait, we learned he get, gets weekly polling updates. I'm sure he loved this week's because this is what he found. Only 33% of Americans approve of the job the president is doing in a new Quinnipiac poll. That is a tie for his record low in that poll. But the president continues to blame bad media coverage and Putin's war as all of these stumbles add up. Even Democrats are getting fed up with the president's inadequacies in office. One liberal strategist not holding back with the advice to Biden telling The Hill this. It's really simple. Be the bleeping president. I realize it's tough and you're drinking out of a fire hose every single day, but there are things you can do to control the public perception, and they haven't done any of that. And the media is noticing. Watch this. Cruel summer, record high gas prices. 8.6, 8.6, a new cycle high usurping March, which was 8.5. That was the highest since 1981. Even this is coming in hotter than what a lot of people were expecting. What has that done to your savings? It's gone, it's depleted, no savings, that's it. If, if, if I can make it from one month to the other month, that's good. Now a widow, she's relying on food banks for the first time. Emily, seniors relying on food banks. It's like we are in a third world country, not the United States of America. That's right. Eight out of 10 Americans feel that their financial situation is worse than it was in the last few years. And over six out of 10 Americans feel that their wages do not keep up with their cost of living. That's a terrifying number and it keeps only growing bigger. And you know, to the constant theme that we have here, it doesn't matter what emanates out of the White House, what talking points we hear repeated over and over again. And that's why the Democratic strategists and the mainstream media and clearly the American public see through it and talk about it because facts are facts and the living experience is exactly the authentic reality we are all living. We all have that same dollar in front of us, the same kitchen table, the same mouths to feed. And so while the strategy hasn't changed from the White House, including lack of policy, our reality has continued to deteriorate and everyone is catching up. I think the last entity to do so is the White House. Yeah, the J Jason, to that point, the White House needs to catch up because here's Brian Deese. Uh, he is an economic advisor to the White House. He's out this morning and here's who's who is to blame. Four Putin began amassing troops at the border. The price of gas in the United States, the average price of gas in the United States was about a hundred a dollar seventy five less than it is today. And in real terms, it was lower than the average for the past decade. So uh, so if you really isolate what's going on here, it's because Vladimir Putin decided to take on this irresponsible war and we've created uh, all of these perturbations in the global energy markets. Fact check Brian Deese. Let's pull up the chart. Here you go, Jason. As you can see, gas prices going up when Biden took office. Uh, it did not start at Putin's invasion. Inconvenient little fact there. And well, and so the question becomes to Brian Deese and the president and the vice president. So what are you going to do about it? Mm -hmm. You know, this this aura that has come over this White House is one of incompetence because you have the Treasury Secretary saying, "Oh, inflation is just going to be transitory," and then she says, "Whoops." Uh, I was wrong about that. You have the Commerce Secretary saying, well, gosh, you know, I, I don't know. We're open to ideas. You mm -hmm. have the Energy Secretary saying, well, yeah, gas is, gas is just going to get worse. With one stroke of the pen, the President of the United States could open up the spigots, could commit to U U.S. De uh, developed energy, and that would drive down the price. But he won't do it because they're so committed to these greenies that they will not do it. They actually wanted high gas prices. Now that they have them, they're realizing that their policies don't resonate with the American people. Well, the Greenies, climate change, they have a brilliant idea to solve illegal immigration. It involves giving $2 billion private sector investment to create climate jobs in the Northern Triangle countries. Julie, the president on this very issue, yeah. had a duel with the teleprompter. Watch. <laughs> Another. <laughs> to lower the risk around these kinds of investments, 
support policy reforms and improve investment in climate in countries. Excuse me, the investment climate, the climate of investment in these countries. Mm. Mm, God, I get so uncomfortable. <laughs> It's so cringy. Um, but yeah, so the consumer price index is something I'd like to talk about because the Labor Department put out these really discouraging numbers uh, on Friday, basically saying that it has risen 8.3%. Consumer price index meaning gasoline, um, food, uh, rent, I mean, everything that Americans are paying for that they can't afford. So now this is like the highest that we've seen inflation since 1981, which I say, and I have a little advice for you as a Democrat, if you're running for midterms, if I were a Democrat running for the midterms, I would probably grab one of those guns that I want banned and hide under my bed and wait until this administration is out of office because you don't have a chance in heck. I'm going to say heck. Is that okay? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I mean, it's just the, the Democrats are going to be so doomed come the midterms because of this, because inflation right now is actually a bigger more important and darning issue, uh, and I'm trying to use good darning. language today, yes. so I said like darning, that? I just made up a word, um, then guns on this point. I mean, yeah. if you look at polls, people are more concerned about inflation over guns, and that's a fact. Kat, the one word we can't use is the one the Democrat strategist used about being the bleeping president. Let your mind go wild. We can't use the word here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't, I, I really don't know which word that would be, um, but I'm, I'm very angry about all of this, inflation and the impact that it's having on everyone, but also because many of us did see this coming. When there was big, huge, massive spending bill after big, huge, massive spending bill, a lot of us were saying this is going to lead to inflation. And a lot of Democratic politicians, Democratic members of the media were saying that that means that we don't care about people who are struggling. And really, what happened is exactly what we were concerned about, that it's created this massive inflation, which has the greatest impact on the very people that we were being attacked and saying we didn't care about. And you mm -hmm. add that to the fact that a lot of these programs were a total waste. If you look at the PPP loans, billions of dollars of waste on fraudulent um, acceptance of those loans because there was no oversight there. So I think that not only should the Biden administration be ashamed of themselves, but every single person who sort of tried to gaslight people into thinking, yeah, I'm so sure that we're really concerned about it because we don't care about people. It's no, we understand the economy and anyone who understands the economy could have and should have seen this coming. Mm -hmm. And it's really awful and having a bad impact on people because we we're concerned about this. Yeah. There's another concern, Jason, you know, at this summit where he's battling with the teleprompter. I think our place on the world stage is really important because, you know, you look at Afghanistan, how tragic that was. Uh, Russia invading. Um, I argue they watched Afghanistan and chose to invade yeah. then. It all goes back to the beginning of the Biden administration. They had this summit in Alaska with China where China lectured us yeah. and the Secretary of State apologized to China. Mm -hmm. Now they go to the summit. Guess who doesn't show up? The Northern Triangle countries who $2 billion are going to. They don't show up. Not only that, one of the countries wouldn't take Blinken's call. Yeah, couldn't even get Mexico to show up. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that is an embarrassment. And, and, and then we're going to talk about immigration today and the vice president who supposedly the borders are, she's <laughs> leaving town to go to a fundraiser. I mean, they just don't seem to care. They're no. not organized. It does reek and smell like Jimmy Carter. They don't like that analogy, but it is so true. You got inflationary problems and, and don't have the standing on the world stage that we should have. We had these problems solved with President Trump. Yeah. May I point out the tone deafness of that, yeah. that in a, in, a, in a place of our time when Americans' greatest concern is the economy and inflation, and that is the lowest approval point for the president, when Americans right now, they are gas stations, which we'll cover next, are shutting down because there is an inability for Americans to pay for it. That is when the vice president is asking for more money. That's when they're can't, that, that is literally when they're asking to fundraise when Americans can't even stretch the dollars that they have right now. That is the tone deaf, the, the emblematic notion of this White House. Yeah, Joe Biden, a lot like Jimmy Carter. It's really feeling like that more and yeah. more each and every day. Hey, everyone. I'm Emily Campagno. Catch me and my co-hosts Harris Faulkner and Kaylee McEnany on Outnumbered every weekday at 12 p.m. Eastern or set your DVR. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page for daily highlights.